Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Cathedral of Hope. We're so glad that you're joining us for a study in the Word. We're going to be having a great time tonight as we share some principles from the Word of God with you that I believe will be uplifting and encouraging. It's wonderful to have technology like we have today because even though we are in an unusual season and having to learn new ways to navigate, we can do it. We can do it. And I hope that you'll not only join us and stay with us, but that you'll share this broadcast with others because we want this to get to as many people as possible because the good news is worth sharing with the world. Join us in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for the precious Holy Spirit. And we believe that in these next few moments, your presence will come in such a tangible and real way that we will experience God's power, God's glory, God's preeminence in an undeniable fashion. I thank you that you give us liberty, liberty to worship, liberty to praise your name. I thank you that you give us the unction, the unction to minister, that we will be able to minister through music and minister through the Word of God. Let the Holy Ghost flow without any reservation or without any hindrance. And we'll give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want you to put your praise shoes on or your garment on and let's begin to worship the Lord as our praise team comes tonight. Let's exalt His name together. Amen. Matter of fact, why don't you just go ahead and scoot up a little bit on the edge of your seat, make up your mind that you're going to praise God just like you are in church right now. Would you do it? I hope you will. You're going to have a great time. Amen. Bless you, ladies. Amen. How many know that the Lord is a great God? Is that what you think? We, I know that He is. I'm thinking, I know that He is a great God. And He is a great King above all gods. Psalm 95 speaks to us tonight, right where you are, or if you're watching this later on, it says, Oh, come and let us sing to the Lord. And that's what we're going to do. We're praisers. God put it in our kingdom DNA. We may not be able to sing like certain people or have all the abilities, but he's given us the DNA of a praiser. Yes. And, and he's created a sound for us. And tonight, right where you are, we're going to make, make his name great and known through our worship. So, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, and let us make a joyous noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. And right where you are, he is at your house. He is with us. He is, he is there to meet every need. And we're just going to love on him tonight. We're going to invoke his presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and we praise you. You're so good. We give you glory for every single thing that you've done in our lives. Yes, God. Because you are the faithful God. You are so faithful. Yes, you are. You're going to be faithful tomorrow and the next day. You've created us for such divine purpose. Yes. We have great hope because of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's pray.
according to St. Mark chapter 4 beginning with verse number 35 Mark chapter 4 beginning with verse 35 down to verse number 41 it says in the same day when the even was come he speaking of Jesus saith unto them let us pass over unto the other side and when they had sent away the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the, wind, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now I want you to think about this passage for a moment under the guise or the subject of what I feel led to share with you tonight, and that is, while 
they're saying, I'm just saying. While they're saying, I'm just saying. In other words, we're hearing so much being said right now, and much of it is based upon fact. Much of it is based upon reality. I mean, nobody is going to get, I hope, into a place of denial that we are not in the midst of a time of crises, that we are not going through something that we as American citizens have never faced before, at least in my lifetime. We've never faced anything like this on a global scale. We've never seen something change the trajectory of life in a matter of hours like this situation has. Call it the coronavirus or call it COVID-19, which is the specific strand, I guess. But whatever you call it, the bottom line is they're talking about it. And many are listening to the point that they are becoming overwhelmed. Because all they hear is the sound of the storm. All they hear are the voices of those that are telling us what's happening in every country, what's happening in every state, what's happening in every county, every city, and every time there's someone that dies or every time there is a new case or every time there is something else that breaks out in another country, it's brought right to the forefront. And we appreciate the updates. We appreciate the fact that there are people that are aware, that are alert. We, we, we're so appreciative for all the work that all of the professionals do in every realm and in every area, whether it be the medical or the news or whatever. We thank God for all of them. Thank God for our government officials that are doing everything they can to keep us informed. But here's the problem. The problem is they're saying what they're seeing according to the facts, according to the information, according to what's happening at ground zero all over the world. But the church is not saying what Jesus is saying the way that we should be saying. When they came to Jesus, understand, they're not going to have a storm. They're in one. Just like we are right now. We're in a storm. I said it earlier at the very beginning, we are navigating in waters we have never tread before. We're going into areas we have never gone into before. So what are we going to do? Well, hopefully we're going to do what we say we believe, and that is we're going to believe the report of the Lord. We're going to talk the report of the Lord. We're not going to be ignorant. We're not going to be uh, in self-denial. We're not going to say it's not real or it doesn't exist. But at the same time, we're not going to let the storm get inside of us. That fear overtakes faith. And we become paralyzed by what they're saying because we're not saying anything. So, while they're saying, I'm just saying. You say, well, Archbishop, what do you mean? Well, kind of like Jesus in this particular passage. The disciples came and woke him up from a sound sleep because of the storm, because of what was happening. No longer is it a forecast, not to reality. The storm is here. The storm is on us. We got to somehow deal with this thing, even though we've never dealt with it before. What do we do? So they go to Jesus, they shake him, and they awaken him and say, don't you care that we're going to die? And Jesus gets up and then he says something. He didn't just listen to what they said. He said, I'm just saying, peace be still. I'm just saying, storm, sit down. I'm just saying, there may be a storm outside the boat, but you ain't coming in the boat. You have got to come to a place that you are so convinced of who you are in God and who God is in you that there may be a plague, a virus, a pandemic across the globe, but it don't have to come across the threshold of your house. Right, I believe that we can be so anchored in the truth of the word of God that there is power, wonder working power in the blood Amen. that we do not allow plagues to come near us. Do you know the Bible says that when you dwell in his presence, when you make that your hiding place, no plague shall come near your dwelling. 
Now, if you really believe the report of the Lord, you believe the word of God, then you ought to just be saved. No plague is going to come near me, my family, my house, my church, my community. You need to stand up and begin to decree it. You need to be the spiritual authority that God has ordained you to be. Don't be crippled by fear that is propagated by those that don't know what you know. Let me go a little bit further. And I like this. In the book of Isaiah chapter 50 and verse number 4, it says, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, or the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learning. The Lord hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Notice what the prophet says. He said, God has given me wisdom. He has given me the tongue of the learning. Now, it's important that you notice the terminology of the Holy Spirit here as the prophet speaks. He said, he gave me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak to him that is weary. Not what to speak. How. There's a big difference between what and how. Because a lot of us may know what we ought to say. We just don't know how to say it. We don't know how to put it within the framework of words, ideas, and concepts that they can get a hold of. Even myself. I have had the privilege of preaching all over this planet. And yet there's still times when I get in certain settings or in certain meetings that I feel so inept. I feel like I don't know how to say what I feel inside or how to communicate what I know needs to be communicated. See, I know the what, I just don't know the how. But the Bible says, and the prophet is declaring it here, God has given me the tongue of the learned so that I know how. Yes. <clears throat> I know how to speak to those who are weary. That's what I want to be able to do. Because there's a lot of people that are weary right now. I mean, don't tell me that it doesn't weary you just a little bit. When you go to the store and all the shelves are empty. Don't tell me it doesn't weary you just a little bit when you'd like to get just a roll of toilet paper. And somebody's already gone and stocked their own store out, up in their basement. I, I was just recently with one of my sons up in Pennsylvania, and while I was there with him, someone actually posted on a social network there in their community and said, if you can't find toilet paper at Walmart or you can't find it at Target, stop by, and she gave her address, stop by my address because I got my own store. And I thought, you know, that's really not the way this thing's supposed to work. It's not about me get everything that I can and you have to come to me to get what you need. It's about us all working in this thing together. And it's the same way in faith. We walk in faith, not isolated, but insulated with those who believe like we believe. That encourages us, that admonishes us to go on. You're going to make it. Listen, there's nobody that is saying now or is ever going to say that there's not a problem. Anybody that says that is living on a planet called dumb. No, we're not going to say that there is not a serious problem problem in the world today but what we are going to do is pray God give me the tongue of the learn so that I can know how to communicate and how to speak and how to encourage and how to lift people up so that they will not become weary why because the scripture tells us that we are not to grow weary in well doing that's not a request. It's not a possibility. It's not something that could happen. God says, don't do it. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Why? Because in due season, everything's going to turn out. All right. In other words, things don't look good. Things aren't going well, but God's got it. Right now, you see the stock market every day moving and mostly in the wrong direction. Every day, you hear people reporting about this concern and that concern. And well, we think that after 
30 days, we're going to get this thing under control. Well, I don't know, it could be two months. Well, I don't know, it could be three months. And there is no balance really in the area of information or communication. Why? Because we've never been here before. Amen. It's not because somebody's trying to hide something from us. It's because every day they're getting new data. Every day they're getting new information. Every day the doctors are getting updated ideas, input, and information. The labs are, are, are working constantly. The scientists are working constantly. The government officials are working, can you believe it, together. And they're all trying to come to some answers and some solutions so that we can win this thing because if one wins, everybody wins in this fight, in this battle. Amen. So again, it's very important that we pray, God, help me to have the tongue of the learned so I know how to speak to those that are weary. And every morning when I get, get up, open my ears so that I can hear as the learned. So I can hear the wisdom of God. So I know how to conduct myself today. So I know when to speak and when not to speak. So I when, know when to reach out and when not to reach out. Because sometimes you can reach out when you ought to keep your hand to yourself. And you become intrusive. And you create more problems than you do solutions. So it's very important. That's where the wisdom of God is so, so important. Listen to this. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 71, it says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Oh, we don't like that. All right. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. David said, It's good for me that I went through some stuff. It's good for me that I faced some hard times. It's good for me that I had to battle some of the devils that I battled and some of the people I had to battle and some of the circumstances I had to battle, it, it was good for me. Why? He said, because I learned your statutes. I learned your word. If there's anything that something like this crisis should do in the church, it's drive us closer to God. It's caused us to delve deeper into his word. Calls us to realize that no matter who it is, think about it. Those nations in the world that everybody else looks at as superpowers can't do nothing about this thing. If they could, they would have already done it. They can't do nothing about it. The U.S. can't do anything about it. Europe can't do anything about it. Russia can't do anything about it. China can't do anything about it. None of them can do anything about it. Why? Because it's out of the control of man. It's an invisible adversary. And he has targeted the human race with a vicious, viral anger. And if the church quietens down, and gets all scared and nervous. Oh, Jesus, you're just going to let us die. Then there's going to be a lot more people that are going to perish unnecessarily. When we could have stopped the storm. I believe we can stop it. I said, I believe we can stop it. I believe that if the church will come together in unity. And if we will fast and pray and seek God over these next 30 days like we never have before, at the end of this thing, we'll not just come out of it, but we'll come out of it with a testimony. We'll come out of it with a sound of victory. We'll come out of it being able to say, you know what that scripture I've quoted all these years, that what the devil meant for evil, God turned it for good. He really did do it. I mean, he turned this thing. Can you believe we're right back on track now? Can you believe everybody's back to work and everybody's enjoying the blessing of God, the Stock market's rising again. People are happy again, out moving, going on airplanes and trains and enjoy. See, everything is shifted all because of the storm. Everything is shifted all because of what the enemy has brought against society. And society is doing their best to deal with it, with the intelligence that they have. And we thank God for that. We thank God for their knowledge. We thank God for their education. We thank God for their expertise. But I'm going to tell you, there is some things that are not settled by minor power. It is only by the Spirit of the living God. I believe God will give them in due season right formulas 
so that they will be able to have a vaccine. So that they will be able to have helps and remedies to get people off the deathbed and get people out of hospitals and off of respirators and get people back on their feet again. I believe that. I believe that. But I'm going to tell you that while they're trying to do what they can do, we better do what we're called to do. They're saying, well, I'm just saying. I'm not going to sit around and wait for the arm of flesh to rescue me. I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'm about to shout right now. I said I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. The Bible said some trust in horses and some in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Why? For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run unto him and they are saved. Glory to God. That's a beautiful reality. Now, let me take it a little bit further. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 7. We're still talking about learning a thing. We're talking about the application of the wisdom of God. In Isaiah 1 17, it says, learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Learn to do what? Well. Learn to do it. Let God aid you and assist you and help you so that you learn to deal with things not from a human perspective, but from a God perspective. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28, Jesus himself is talking, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus said, I want you to learn some things about me. I want you to know some things about me. I want you to have some wisdom about who I am and how I function and how I operate. Come to me if you're burdened. Come to me with all that stuff that's got you weighed down. Come to me and I will give you rest because I'm meek and lowly in heart and I'm going to give you rest in your souls. What does that mean? That means in your mind, in your emotions, he's going to take the stress out, the worry out, the anxiety out whenever you trust in him. Why? Because his yoke is easy. His burden is light. But you're not going to be able to do that if you haven't learned him. He said, learn of me. Learn about me. Who I am. How I function. How I operate. What I make available. What I can do for you. Learn about me. I'm praying that we'll pray and we'll say, like Jesus said in this passage, I want to learn to do well. I want to learn to do well. We need a revelation of what that means. What does it mean to do well? What does it mean to live well? We really need a revelation in the midst of a challenging, confrontational, and conflicting moment. I want to know what does it mean to be well? Because to be well doesn't just mean to feel good all the time. To be well doesn't mean that I'm never faced with a challenge physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. Well means like the woman when she said to the prophet, as her boy is dead laying on the bed in the house, it is well. It is well with my soul. In other words, yeah, there's a storm out there, but it's not in me. That's what it means to be well. It's well. I saw one time an illustration that was given. I thought it was amazing. There were two artists that were hired and contracted to paint a picture of peace. And on one, there was a person that painted this beautiful portrait of this lake that was so placid and so calm and the sun was beating down upon it. Birds were flying through the air. And just to look at it made you just want to go, wow. you just like to be somewhere like that. It just looked peaceful. It looked restful. 
The second artist unveiled his painting, and when he unveiled his painting, there was a giant waterfall that was crashing into jagged rocks. And at the bottom of the waterfall, amidst the jagged rocks, there was one tree. And up in the top of the tree, there was a nest, and in the nest there was a little bird, and the bird was sound asleep. Hmm. And somebody asked him, said, how does this represent peace? That looks like stony water. That looks like turbulent water. He said, yeah, but that little bird knows that as long as where he's supposed to be, it can't touch him. He's sheltered. He's in a place of safety, even though there's danger all around him. That's, right. that's what being well is all about. And that's where God wants you and I to come to. That's where he wants our faith level to rise to. That we can say, it is well. It's well with my wife. It's well with my children. It's well with my grandchildren. It's well with my future. It's well with my present. It is well, no matter what's going on, because I know whom I have believed. Yes. See, you've got to come to that place. If you don't come to that place, all the preaching in the world is not going to help you. If you come to that, if you don't come to that place in your understanding and get that kind of a revelation, we can pray for you until we don't have any more words to pray. And you're never going to change. Because it's not enough just to do things that we consider to be spiritual or things that we consider to be religious. We've got to do what we do out of revelation. So I'm praying that God will help us to learn to do well. Amen. What it really means. In 2 Kings 4.23... The Bible says, and he said, wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. Just what I was talking about, the story with the woman. And she said, it shall be well. Everything's going to be all right. I've come to tell somebody tonight, everything's going to be all right. Yes, it is. You're going to make it. You're going to smile again. You're going to laugh again. Don't get all stressed. Because you can't go to school or you can't go hang out with your friends. Don't get all stressed because if you can't do the things you normally do. Make it a journey. Enjoy the journey. Make it a time when you can interact with your family. Maybe you ought to try getting to know each other. Oh, wouldn't that be a miracle? That over the next couple of weeks, everybody just take time out during the day. Lay your phone down. Disconnect from uh, all the electronics. All the games, Nintendo and Xbox and whatever else they got out there. Just unplug it for a little while or turn it off for a little while. Sit down and do something that's old school. Pull out a board game. Yeah. Sit down and play a game. You, you'd be amazed. There's somebody inside of them you had never met before right. that likes to laugh, that likes to have fun. But they're so isolated in their own little world all the time because of what we have become comfortable with that we don't even really know each other. We live in the same house. We call each other family, but we don't know each other. It happens at home. It happens in the church. I mean, it's amazing to me. We come and gather together in the past and we'll do it again in the future. Right now, we're following the guidelines that are being given to us by our authorities that are over us. Bible said we're to do that. And as long as they don't do anything that violates the word of God or ask us to do anything that violates our morals, we're going to do our best to abide by what they say. And, and so we're, we're doing these things and we're following the protocol that they're giving us. And for so many people, I mean, it, it literally, it's like they're driving them crazy because they can't go and do and be where they want to be with who they want to be or how long they want, whatever. And here in this house, when we gather together, we have a wonderful time. We have a wonderful celebration. We enjoy the community of faith. But you know what the greatest tragedy is even here at Cathedral of Hope? The greatest tragedy is we've got people that have gathered together for years and don't have a clue who that person is they gather with. Because we're not hospitable to one another. We don't genuinely care for one another. We don't bear one another's burdens. Because see, in order to be hospitable and to care for each other and to pray for each other and to bear one another's burdens and all those kind of things, you got to get to know each other. So that means you got to do that other thing called fellowship with one another. That's right. I don't have time. My schedule's full. My schedule. Well, then you're too busy. 
Some people are just busy to be busy. I mean, I watch them on Sunday morning, so I'm in the church service. I'm up here preaching, and they still got their phones on. And they act like you got so much going on, you can't turn your phone off for an hour and a half, two hours on Sunday so you can get a word from God. And then some folks, it's not that they're communicating something that's important. They're on Snapchat and Instagram. and Well, I better get off that anyway. <laughs> In 2 Kings 4, 26, same story about the same woman. Her boy is dead. She went and goes and gets a prophet. She's asked the question, how is it with everybody in your house, including the boy? It is well. Then look, verse 26. The, the prophet says to his servants, run now, I, I pray thee to meet her and say to her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. Why? Because even though there was death in the house, there wasn't death in her heart. Even though that the enemy had struck at the very juggler, the very life flow of her family unit, she said, it is well. Why? Because I still believe God. God gave me a promise. He's not a man that he should lie. I still believe God that my boy is going to grow up to be the lineage and the legacy that I believed God for. I still believe that what was spoken to me shall be performed. See, you've got to have that kind of a conviction. There shall be a performance of the thing that God said. you got to be convinced of it. Now, quickly, let me give you another thing. In the book of Psalms, 112 verse 7 it says he shall not be afraid of evil tidings why his heart is fixed trusting in the Lord his heart is established he shall not be afraid until he see his desires upon his enemies I'm not going to be afraid I'm not going to be troubled I'm not going to do anything except stand on the word of God, stay clothed with the whole armor of God, believe the report of the Lord until I see my desire on my enemy, the coronavirus, COVID-19, you coming now. I think it's kind of interesting too <laughs> that they call this thing COVID-19 because in biblical numerology, one of my friends was telling me today, the number 19 is the number of faith. <laughs> so when COVID-19 shows up, say, oh, meet the real 19. Talk to my faith. Are you still with me? It's wonderful to get revelation. It's wonderful to get information. It's wonderful to get illumination because the very thing that the devil tries to use to bring you into captivity or bring you into a place of paralysis, you can turn around and use it and shoot him right in the face with it. Glory to God. Well, let me just go a little further here. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4, He, our God, is the rock. His work is perfect. For all His ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and righteous is He. Amen. The reason that we can say it as well is because God is a just God. Yes, he is. God is not going to be mocked. God is not going to be made a fool of. If God said it, child of God, he'll perform it. Yes, he he'll bring it to pass even to a thousand generations. So put your trust in him. Put your trust in him. In Proverbs chapter 9 and verse number 9, the Bible said, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will yet be wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. A person who has justice in his heart. A person who whose scales are balanced. A person who has truth and mercy, righteousness and peace. He's balanced. A just man will increase in learning. Then Proverbs 10, 31, listen to the wise man Solomon. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut out. There's some people about to lose their tongue. God is going to detongue them. I know that's not a word, but you understand. God's going to cut the tongue right out of their mouth. They have perpetrated a lie. They have spread disaster. 
And there's something, I'm going to tell you, we're going to find out at the end of the day, and I heard this and I shared it with my wife, there's some things I just can't share openly right now. But there's some things God has showed me about this, and I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, we're going to find out it's demonic. We're going to find out that there's more to it than just a virus. And that's all I'll say about that. But the Bible says in Matthew 119, then Joseph, here we're talking about Joseph and Mary. Jesus is about to show up here before too long. She's been impregnated by the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. He said, I don't want to embarrass this girl, even though she messed up. You know, some of us, we find somebody that messes up, we're the first one to pick up a rock. And we want to throw it and hit somebody. I knew it. I knew it. No, no, no. Joseph was trying to cover her even when he was unsure of what was happening. But aren't you glad that God gave him peace in the midst of his own storm, sent an angel to minister to him? I prophesy in the name of Jesus, angels are being dispatched to come to your house, to minister to your life, to help you to know that God is with you, God is for you, and that you're going to make it not just through, but to the promise of God. You're going to make it. Now quickly, and I've got to close. The Bible tells us in Matthew 27, 19, when he's still talking about Jesus now, when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, say, how thou nothing to do with that just man, Jesus, the just man. Jesus is standing before Pilate. Pilate's wife has dreamed a dream, and now she comes and she says, don't, don't have anything to do with him. Don't get caught up in all of this jibber-jabber. They're saved. They're saved. And it's almost like his wife walks up and said, and, uh, honey, I'm just saved. I'm just saying, don't, don't get mixed up in this. Because I suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. In Mark 6, 20, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and holy. And observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things. And he heard him gladly. In Luke 2, 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Now, as I close, listen to the scripture in Romans 1.17, and I've got so much more I could share. But it says in Romans 1.17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The way that you know whether someone is really a just man or a just woman is do they really live by faith? Mm. Do they trust God when they can't trace God? Mm. Do they trust God when they don't see Him? They don't feel Him? They don't even know if He's paying attention in their senses and in their natural man. But they trust Him. They lean on Jesus. Father, I pray tonight that you will help us as never before to lean into you, to trust you completely, to rely upon you, for you can be trusted. And may we be able, oh God, to have the wisdom we need, know how we should speak, be well in our life, communicate the will of God, the plan of God, the knowledge of God to those that are around us that are hopeless and helpless. And may we also at the same time be just. Oh, it doesn't mean that we're perfect in ourselves, but we are perfect in Him who loves us. We're perfect in the one who gave His life for us. And before God, we can stand as just. We're not condemning people. We're not criticizing people. We're not putting anybody down. We're not going to talk about one group or another group. We're not going to talk about this or that. This is not a time for those things. This is a time for the church to come together and pray. This is a time for the voice of the Lord to be heard in the earth. Help us to lay aside all the trivia. Help us to lay aside all the things that we are now discovering aren't as important as we thought they were. And help us, oh God,
to reach up one more time and take hold of the nail scarred hand of the Christ of Calvary, the one who died and gave his life a ransom for many, the one who rose from the dead, defeating death, hell, and the grave, and gave the keys that give access, that give victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, you know what you need to do? You need to give. <laughs> you say, well, I'm not in church. Oh, yes, you are. Wherever you are right now, listen to this word. You're in church. You're in church. And there's three things that we're going to need to do during these, this season, especially these next 30 days. We're going to need to do it like we've never done it before. We're going to need to pray. We're going to need to fast. And we're going to need to give. You need to sow dangerous seed. You need to sow uncommon seed in this time when the enemy is trying to threaten the economy of nations. Be like Isaac. And the Bible said in the middle of the family, he sowed his seed. While everybody else was running scared, he sowed his seed right where he was and reaped a hundredfold. Prophesied those that will put their trust in God will see that. They'll see that. And at the end of the 30 days, you'll reap a blessing like you've never seen before. You want to give? You want to be a part of this moment? You can go to cathedralofhope.church. Real easy way to do it. Go to cathedralofhope.church. You can set up a giving account if you haven't done that. Or if you want to just give one time, there's a, way to, there's a very easy way to do that. Just a one-time gift with your bank card or your credit card. You can also text any amount with a bank card or a credit card. Text any amount to 706 229 7879. I can't believe I even stuttered as many times as I've said that number 706 229 7879. And I hope you will, really. If you would have been here in church, live in person, and you would have been challenged in your faith, you would have given something. You'd have given something. So don't just be at home and say, well, nobody's going to know what I did or didn't do. God does. And I'm telling you more importantly, you do, and you know that I'm not just sowing or giving because Archbishop is saying sow and give. I'm sowing and giving because I believe at the end of this thing, God is going to treat. He's going to put my life on a fast track. I'll say it that way. He's going to put me on a fast track and spring me forward into my future and my destiny and everything the devil thought that he paused or that he derailed or he slowed down. God's going to put me ahead of schedule. He really is. All right? So give right now. And as you're giving, I want to encourage you to continue to pray for one another. I want to encourage you also to share this with other people. We're going to be live at 1030 on Sunday. Uh, we're not going to be having corporate worship here in the church, but we're going to be doing it online through Facebook and YouTube and other ways that we're going to do it. And, and we're getting things worked out. We're getting some kinks out of it where it'll be a lot better. And we're really excited about that. And so we want you to plan to be ready to go at 1030. Amen? Sunday morning. We're going to have a great, great time. It's going to be powerful. I already feel the word stirring in my spirit. I love you. I thank God for you. Appreciate you joining us tonight. And I look forward to sharing with you in the days to come. God bless you is my prayer.